Okay, everyone. I assume that you know why we're here, right? I've checked the perimeter. The coast is all clear. All right, then it's time. Time to shop for the latest fashions at Chioria Boutique. Huh. Uh, don't you think something sounds a little off about that line? Yeah, this is... Yeah, this is Chioria Boutique that we're talking about. I feel like we need something that sounds... I, I don't know, a little more extravagant, maybe? Mm. Uh, we'll have yeah. to talk about it later. The lights have been turned on and the audience is already here. The program is starting. Oh, um, hi. <laughs> Welcome to the Genshin Impact version 4.3 special program. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> As you can see, our show is sponsored by Chioria Boutique, one of the leading fashion houses in Fontaine. But before we go any further, let's take a moment to watch the version 4.3 trailer. Camera operator, that can be a pretty technical job. Are you really up to it? Wait, you put no thought into finding a good camera angle, and the characters weren't in the shots. Ahem! Positions, everyone! <laughs> nice to meet you. I am Navia, the president, leader, commander-in-chief, executive director, and boss of Spina di Rosula. Hey there! <laughs> yeah! Ha! I'm fellow warfare! will start rolling as soon as the set is ready. Whoa, Marina's really kicking things into gear as the director. Props and lighting set the scene. Actors can get their makeup done. Extras, go over your positions. Camera ready, get the clobber board. Actors, to your position. Lights, camera, action. What? Enough, villain. Pay for the death of our mother. <laughs> You're just as naive as her. Did you really think two muskets would be enough to defeat me? Your crimes are evident! Drop your weapons! Justice will prevail! Not bad. The actor's emotions were all on point. Let's keep that take. We'll move on to the next scene. You mean... Did you really think you'd get away? Chevres... You can keep your mora, and you can go to hell. Excellent! That was beyond mesmerizing. Let's make a film that'll make some serious waves in Fontaine. Uh, not the kind of waves that drown people. I mean, the good kind of waves. <laughs> Welcome back to the version 4.3 special program, everyone. I'm Sarah Miller-Cruz, the voice of Lumine, and today I'm joined by... Hey, everybody, I'm Brenna Larson, the voice of Navia, president of the Spina di Rosula. And I'm Erica Lindbeck, the voice of Chevres. Yay! Yay! Oh my gosh, I'm so <laughs> excited. This is the first time we've had you two on the special program. So excited. Yeah. It's so great. <laughs> okay, so actually, um, we have a tradition on the program where we all get to sing everyone a little song. Oh. Huh? <laughs> okay. okay. Nice try. I've seen the special programs before. You don't oh. want to sing a song? You can sing a, like, a I little love song singing. about Listen. Genshin. I know. <laughs> yeah. 
Genshin Impact. No, okay. Uh, back to business, back to business. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like we mentioned before, this program is sponsored by the Chioria Boutique. Mm. So while we're sharing content from version 4.3, I also wanted to get some inspiration for shooting commercials for the boutique. Mm -hmm. mm. We don't want to let our client down. Yeah, and, and speaking of new content, we can't have a new version without introducing some new characters. As you already saw in the trailer, Navia and Shavros will be our new playable characters. Yay! Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm sure many of our viewers are already familiar with Navia after seeing her throughout Fontaine's Archon Quest. But who is Shavros? Mm, who indeed? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Other Fontaine characters have already mentioned Shavros before in their voice lines, but um, Shavros will finally be making an official appearance in version 4.3. Yeah, I'm so excited! Mm -hmm. So exciting! <laughs> Oh, by the way, what do you think of letting one of our characters from the new version take the lead role in our commercial? Oh, well, I mean, mm. if we're shooting a video for Chioria Boutique, then I think Navia would be an obvious choice. After all, Navia's clothing was designed by Chiori herself. Uh, Wait, Erica, that was actually a really natural sounding product placement for <laughs> Chioria Boutique? Your art, you're amazing at this! <laughs> I know, I know it sounds like product placement, but Chiori really was the designer who created Navia's outfit. <laughs> um, next, <laughs> let's have a look at her fashion show. Ooh, and by fashion show, we mean her character showcase. I always say that blind optimism isn't the answer. If you want a bright future, you have to go out and seize it with your own two hands. This one's got your name on it! A proper send-up from the speed of with love. I'm sorry, can we take a moment to appreciate how perfectly Chiori customized Navia's clothes and accessories to reflect her personality? She clearly pays a lot of attention to the small details. <laughs> Erica, I love how seriously you're taking the sponsorship. It's really great. <laughs> it's important. <laughs> um, while we're on this topic, though, Navia's parasol seems pretty interesting. On the outside, it looks like a delicate accessory used to block out the sun, but on the inside, there's actually a secret firearm that can be used to ward off enemies at a moment's notice. It's elegant and fierce all at once. Just like Navia herself. <laughs> exactly. Even when it comes to her enemies, Navia is not the type to eschew basic etiquette, so she prefers to maintain appropriate distance while in combat. While using her elemental skill, Navia opens her gunbrella and fires multiple Rosula shard shots that can pass through opponents, dealing geo damage upon a successful strike. Ooh. For a period of time after using her elemental skill, Navia's normal, charged, and plunging attacks will deal increased damage and become infused with the power of geo, which cannot be overridden. Now, when Navia is in combat, there are these little markings around her that look like bullets. I wonder if that's some sort of ammo for the Gunbrella? Oh yeah! Yes, you guessed it! When a character in the party obtains an elemental shard created from the crystallized reaction, Navia will gain crystal shrapnel charges. Navia will consume these charges after unleashing her elemental skill. Her skill damage increases with the number of charges that she's accumulated. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So you're saying that Navia's elemental skill becomes more powerful if she works together with mm -hmm. other characters mm -hmm. in the party to trigger the crystallized reaction. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Navia's elemental verse calls forth the Rosula Dorata Salute, which unleashes a massive bombardment on opponents in front of her, periodically dealing geo-elemental damage. I should also mention that Navia will accumulate crystal shrapnel charges at certain intervals if she strikes enemies with the Rosula Dorada Salute. Ooh, now that salute is spectacular. <laughs> That's awesome. I heard that the Spina di Rosula likes to perform firearm salutes before important negotiations. You know, as a way to celebrate future success. And don't misunderstand, you guys. It's not an intimidation tactic at all. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess, I guess that's just the Spina's way of showing respect in their own way. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. <laughs> Not intimidating at all. No. <laughs> As the president of the Spina di Rosula, Navia is always trying to collect the latest intel by exploring all corners of Fontaine. When Navia is dispatched on a 20-hour expedition in Fontaine, rewards gained will be increased. Okay, so we just mentioned that Navia is the president of the Spina di Rosula. 
So I think we should bring up Spina's contributions to averting Fontaine's prophesized crisis. Mm. I mean, it was all thanks to Navia's leadership. Exactly. Some people even lost their lives during that disaster. Mm. I'm certain that those events weighed heavily on Navia, but she remained tough and committed to leading the Spina. Yeah. Yeah, and while we're on the topic of Fontaine's crisis, though the prophesized dangers are over, the town is probably still busy rebuilding everything, right? Mm -hmm. I bet Navia's gonna be occupied with that for a long time. Oh, definitely. That's something that travelers will be able to see for themselves. Navia Story Quests, the Rosa Multiflora chapter, will become available in version 4.3. The Spina will be working diligently to rebuild Poisson. Though repairing the houses will be straightforward, the emotional distress may be much more difficult to address. If you're curious about how Navia and her crew are going to proceed, then be sure to check it out. Oh, I'm so excited! Yeah, yeah me I'm too. looking forward to seeing what happens. <laughs> okay, so now that we've introduced Navia, it's time for Shavras to be in the spotlight! <laughs> okay, I know that since she's a newcomer, you probably can't wait to learn more about her. So let's get right into it. Okay, um, hmm. How should I introduce her? Uh, first off, Shavras is the captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. It's a Fontanian organization that handles all sorts of difficult cases and dangerous criminals. Ooh. <laughs> She doesn't like to appear in public without good cause, mm -hmm. so if you happen to run into her, it's likely that you're in some sort of trouble. But, oh. but as long as you're a law-abiding citizen, there's no need to worry. <laughs> Chevrolet <laughs> is actually really easy to get along with outside of work. Oh, Fistos are just the best snack. They're easy to carry with you and go with so many sauces. Um, what? That was so fire. <laughs> and I'm not just talking about her skills. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at her idol animation. I love that she loves snacks. Mm -hmm. That is so awesome. She's a girl's girl, and she gets it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she gets it. She really does. <laughs> She's not exactly what you'd expect from the captain of the special patrol, though, right? I guess that's kind of true. I mean, Chevrolet's work as a captain can be really stressful. I mean, I can't blame the girl for indulging every once in a while to relieve some stress. She even adjusts her training regimen to make up for her snacking habits. In fact, she trains more than any other member of the special patrol. Her platoon really admires her for that. Wow, okay, she's got some willpower. That is awesome. She's really admirable. The Special Patrol prioritizes combat ability above all else, so the organization often attracts some eccentric personalities. Okay. Mm, yeah. <laughs> the Special Patrol used to have problems with insubordination, but ever since Chevrolet took control, everyone has fallen into line, which does not surprise me at all. <laughs> she commands respect among her peers, and she's a formidable fighter, and she leads by example. Though she demands excellence from her platoon, she holds herself to even higher standards. She always tries to be an example for others to follow, whether it's investigating cases or in marksmanship practice. And it looks like a lot of her skills involve using a musket. She must be a pretty good shot. Mm-hmm, for sure. Chevrolet and her musket are basically partners in crime. They're inseparable. She definitely knows her way around a firearm. Chevrolet uses her musket to fire at opponents during her elemental skill. Ooh. For a period of time after unleashing her elemental skill, Chevrolet will continuously restore HP to the active character on the field. During her elemental burst, Chevrolet fires an explosive grenade with her musket, which will split into secondary explosive shells upon impact. Haha, <laughs> impact. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Wait, I noticed that Chevrolet has bullet like markings around her during combat. Can she shoot a special type of ammo? That's right. Chevrolet obtains an overcharged ball when a nearby party member triggers the overloaded reaction. Holding Chevrolet's elemental skill will consume this special ammo to unleash an even more powerful pyro attack that covers a larger AoE. This attack will also grant an attack buff to all pyro and electro characters in the party. Mm. Okay, so that's where the name Overcharged Ball comes from. Uh-huh. Chevrolet actually came up with the name herself. Oh. She was reading a novel where the protagonist believed that names held a lot of power. If you give something a cool-sounding name, then you've given yourself an advantage over your enemies. 
That kind of logic resonated with her, I guess. <laughs> oh, well, I guess she has a point. Oh, I should also mention what happens if Shavras is paired with all Pyro and Electro characters. If your party contains at least one character of either type, then triggering the overloaded reaction will cause an opponent's Pyro and Electro resistances to decrease. Okay, so it seems like Shavras could really shine in an overload team comp, but I also did notice that Shavras isn't solely limited to a musket. Mm -hmm. She also uses a pole arm in combat. <laughs> okay, honestly, if I were a criminal, <laughs> I feel like I'd be pretty nervous if she came after me. Oh, for sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Most people who have something to hide avoid her like their lives depend on it. And maybe it does. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, that's why Chevres trains so hard. She has to be able to catch a wide variety of cunning criminals who try to evade her at all costs. So when Chevres is in your party, stamina consumption from sprinting is decreased. Oh, I love that. These two new characters are great. Both of them would be great leads in our commercial. I don't know, it's so hard to choose. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I will make this even harder for you. Oh no. We're about to take a look at what event wishes that travelers can look forward to in version 4.3. The candidate pool for the lead role of our commercial is about to get even bigger. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> in the first half of version 4.3, travelers can look forward to event wishes for Navia and Ayaka. A new five-star Claymore, Verdict, will also be featured in the Weapon Event Wish. In the second half of version 4.3, we'll have returning event wishes from the Raiden Shogun and Yoimiya. During this time, Chevrus will also receive a huge drop rate boost. Yay. Be sure to check them out if you're interested. That's awesome. Travelers can also look forward to two new artifact sets in version 4.3, Songs of Days Past and Nighttime Whispers in the Echoing Woods. Be sure to keep an eye on future announcements to learn more mm. about them. This seems like the perfect time for our first break. We've shared a ton of information so far, and I bet travelers could use some time to digest it all. You're right. For <laughs> Definitely. Sure. Let's take a break while we take a look at the second group of redemption codes. The version 4.3 special program is brought to you by Chioria Boutique and will return shortly. everyone. So, we've thoroughly discussed our casting options for the Chioria Boutique commercial, but the content of the commercial is also important, right? Do you have any ideas? Hmm. If we're making a commercial for Chioria Boutique, then how about we include some event footage of Chiori? Oh! <gasps> Yay! Chiori is actually going to appear in the event for version 4.3. What? Hmm. While the travelers have been able to see her store in the Court of Fontaine, we'll finally get to meet her in person! Yes, I know. Travelers can also look forward to meeting Ayaka and Ayato in Fontaine. Chiori suggested that they should stop by, so here they are. So cool! Hey, this is actually the perfect time for a word from our sponsor. An Inazuma-born fashion icon, Chiori! Chioria Boutique is your one-stop shop for the latest and most influential fashion in Fontaine. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. Chiori is acquainted with the Kamisato siblings because she's also from Inazuma. She actually introduced Sayaka and Ayato to Xavier and recommended that they make the trip to Fontaine for the Fontanalia Film Festival. So exciting! Will you tell us more about the Fontanalia Film Festival? Oh, the Fontanalia Festival was established to commemorate the legendary Loch Knights. According to the myths, they went on a quest to search for the Oceanids and eventually welcomed the Hydro Archon Egeria to Fontaine. Mm hmm. It's one of the most important festivals in Fontaine, like what the Windbloom Festival is to Mondstadt and Lantern Rite is to Liyue. 
Ah, so exciting! Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Fontaine Film Association proposed the Fontanalia Film Festival earlier this year. And during this time, the public may submit films for evaluation. The entry with the highest score will be given the Farina Award by the association. Well, we can see Farina working with Ayaka and the others here. So wait, does this mean that there's a chance that Farina might win the Farina Award? <gasps> okay, now I'm intrigued. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to leave you in suspense. If travelers are curious about what Ayaka and the others are doing in Fontaine, or how Farina fared, you'll just have to play the event when the new version becomes available. Hmm. So we know that several friends from Inazuma will be in Fontaine for the Fontanalia Film Festival, but travelers have so much more to be excited about. Travelers will also have the opportunity to participate in a variety of activity booths during the festival. Each one will have a different theme. Ooh. <laughs> ah, so cool. The first activity booth is the Thousand Pace Interdiction Arc Minute Sharpshooting Zone. In this activity, travelers will use the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol simulation device to practice targeting and shooting opponents. Yep. Ooh. The Special Patrol wanted the public to experience how fun target practice can be. <laughs> and the second activity booth is called Trick Shots Tricky Lights. In this activity, travelers will use the studio's special lighting effects to film a fight scene. Take advantage of the buffs brought about by the special lighting effects to defeat an endless stream of opponents and obtain a higher score. So cool. Those special lighting effects are really giving off old movie vibes. Navia's mm. movements are also super smooth. It's all so atmospheric. Oh, for yeah. sure. But not everyone is enjoying the fun and games. Travelers will meet a contract employee at the third activity booth. She needs some help with her demanding client. During the activity Extreme Drive, travelers will help her test out stabilization mecha balls. Look at how the traveler chases after those stabilization <laughs> mecha balls. Okay, I bet that contract employee can relate since she's being chased down by that client. <laughs> totally. Stabilization mecha balls seem pretty ordinary, but they're actually very agile. They'll automatically avoid all testers by moving in the opposite direction of your movement. You can find jump boosters around the testing grounds. Travelers can use them to jump higher and further, which is perfect for quickly traversing to the other side of a stabilization mecha ball. Travelers in co-op matches will have to find a way to herd as many stabilization mecha balls into their target area as possible within the time limit. The more mecha balls that end up in your area, the more points you'll earn. The fourth activity booth is called Into the Frame. In this activity, travelers will get to shoot their own scenes by experimenting with different camera positions and narration techniques. Cool! We get to make a movie! That's yeah. awesome! <laughs> travelers might remember helping out Xavier with some filmmaking back in Inazuma, but this seems more professional. Wait, maybe this can be the inspiration for our commercial. Oh! Now that I think about it, a Fontanian man went to Inazuma to shoot a film. I guess international travel can be a source of artistic inspiration. That must have also been true in Chiori's case, since she opened Chioria's boutique in Fontaine. Ooh, that could be a strong theme for our commercial. Actually, Ayaka and Ayato aren't the only Inazumans traveling abroad in version 4.3. Kuki Shinobu just arrived in Liyue for her class reunion. Yeah, and Ito decided to tag along as the boss of the Arataki gang. And he brought his Onikabuto with him. I think he plans to train his beetles for battle. Wow. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> the Arataki Blazing Armor Beetle Battle Boot Camp. That name is definitely very Ito. <laughs> right? <laughs> for sure. And there was also a beetle battle event in version 3.4, right? Ito battles against a super powerful beetle battler. I believe his name was Grandmaster Hanakado. Mm. Yep. Grandmaster Hanakado made an impressive showing during the last Beetle Battle event. This time, he's made the trip to Liyue with Ito. It seems like the two of them have met a mysterious new Beetle Battle Master. Ooh. What? Who is it? Tell us! Tell us, tell us, tell us! <laughs> I'm sorry! I'm sorry, I can't give that away! Travelers will have to discover their identity during the event. Ah. Aside from meeting this mysterious new Beetle Battle Master, travelers can also look forward to new ways to battle. While the movement and charge mechanics remain unchanged from the original event, travelers can now also instruct Onikabuto to use guard to defend against electro bullet and jet stream attacks. Mm. Mm. Make use of the movement, charge, and guard strategies to topple your opponents no matter what they throw at you. 
master them, and you'll be ready to tackle the ultimate trial of the strong. Ooh. <laughs> trial of the strong. <laughs> Travelers can look forward to encountering an old friend in the Fontanian countryside. That's right, Ullman came to Fontaine and he brought his treasure map and treasure seeking Seely along with him. Yay! Our <laughs> mini Seely friend is back! <laughs> <laughs> so cute! Travelers can help restore the Seely's vitality by absorbing energy from the locations that are marked on Ullman's treasure map. In return, the Seely will guide us to the locations of buried treasure. After collecting ancient iron coins during this event, you can exchange them for various rewards, including a mini Seely in your preferred color. Ooh! Okay, so in the event preview, it looked like some of the treasure is located underwater, but when I first arrived in Fontaine, I discovered that Seely couldn't follow me underwater. Is this treasure-seeking Seely different? Uh, that is very observant of you. Oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> in this iteration of the Lost Riches event, a new mini Seely named Brilliance will be available. This new mini Seely can travel underwater. Amazing! Yeah! Treasure isn't the only thing that you'll discover in Fontaine's countryside. You might also come across a mysterious domain guarded by a unique swordmaster who searches for the meaning of battle. During the Dance of Resolute Will, travelers will get the chance to participate in combat challenges. Each challenge stage will contain two rounds. Travelers must select their party compositions before the challenge starts. One of your chosen characters must be used in both rounds, but no other character can be repeated. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. After you complete a blade dance objective during a challenge, you will obtain a heightened verve buff. Defeating opponents while heightened verve is active will grant you more points. And another old friend is returning in version 4.3. That's right, it's Lieben! Yay! Oh. <laughs> and if Lieben is around, then that must mean we'll have a chance to trade a bunch of items for Primo gems again. Ooh! <laughs> Exciting! <laughs> Okay, so it looks like Lieben isn't the only old friend we'll be reunited with in version 4.3. Several familiar faces will be joining the Genius Invocation TCG. After this update, travelers will have the opportunity to challenge characters around Fontaine. Ooh. A new Fontaine-themed table customization will also be available. Ah, I'm so excited to see players challenge some melazines. I know, so exciting. Mm -hmm. Travelers can look forward to the addition of several new cards, including six new character cards, plus five new monster cards, such as Dvalin, Signora, and Ejdaha, will be obtainable from the corresponding tavern challenges. But that's not all. The Forge Realms Temper event will also be making a reappearance, and there will be an update to the heated battle mode. Be on the lookout for future announcements. There's TCG content to look forward to outside the game as well. The Genius Invocation TCG Asia Invitational will officially begin in January 2024. What? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Travelers can look forward to some friendly competition between 16 of the top TCG players all across Asia. I heard they're some of the best in the region. So cool. Be sure to follow the Astro Carnival X or Twitter account to stay up to date on the latest news about this epic showdown. Ooh. Oh my gosh, this is all so exciting! Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, hang on to that feeling, because we're taking a short break to look at the next group of redemption codes. We'll be back to sharing more exciting information about version 4.3 in just a moment. Yay! Welcome back, travelers! We've introduced a lot of content, and we've gotten a ton of inspiration for our commercial. 
Honestly, our promotion is definitely shaping up. Totally. But before we reveal our new idea, let's dive into the system optimizations that the project team has prepared for version 4.3. Okay. First, we have some artifact-related optimizations to introduce. With an ever-increasing amount of artifact sets to choose from, many travelers may have been hoping for a better and quicker way to filter and locate desired artifacts. After the version 4.3 update, travelers can check out artifact set recommendations for a given character to see what artifact sets active players have been choosing for that character recently. That's cool! Mm -hmm. In addition, an automatic locking function has been added. Now, when filtering artifacts in your inventory, you can lock the artifacts that fit your filter specifications in batches. With the automatic locking function, newly acquired artifacts that fit your locking criteria will automatically be locked when added to your inventory. Oh, that's awesome. Travelers can have up to two preset auto-lock plans for each artifact set. Hmm. Travelers can choose their own or follow the recommended settings summarized for active player data. Since it may take some time to collect the necessary statistics, new artifact sets will not feature recommended locking settings immediately. Okay. Yes. <laughs> of course, if you can lock artifacts in batches, you can unlock them in batches as well. Travelers can look forward to both of those features in the new update. That's not all though. What? Travelers will be able to sort artifacts by three different attributes. Plus, the artifact enhancement screen will allow travelers to add a greater amount of enhancement materials at once. An enhancement limit feature will also be available. Hopefully, these optimizations will not only make artifacts easier to find, but also quicker to level. Be on the lookout for future announcements to learn more. The project team is always working hard to address your survey feedback. So, travelers should look forward to further artifact-related optimizations in future version updates. Improvements to equipping artifacts and other artifact-related optimizations are all in the works. In addition, the project team has made adjustments to provide smoother ascension and enhancement experiences for travelers. When you level up a character, enhance an artifact, or enhance a weapon, you no longer have to click so many pop-up windows. Oh, that's awesome! As a mm -hmm. new player using a few 1 and 2 star materials to level artifacts, the whole process might feel a bit slow, especially with pop-up windows appearing. Totally. Mm. This new optimization significantly reduces the amount of pop-up windows that we have to click through so travelers can look forward to a much smoother enhancement and leveling process. The next optimization has made it easier to repeat domain challenges. Previously, travelers who tried to continue domain challenges would be sent to the entrance of the domain. Mm. This meant they would have to run all the way to the center to start the challenge. But after this update, travelers who choose to continue in a domain challenge will load right next to the area where you actually start fighting, which is amazing. <laughs> so happy farming, everyone. <laughs> this yes. should make it way easier for players to farm artifacts for Navia. Oh, yeah, <laughs> true, definitely. True. <laughs> In addition, version 4.3 has made it easier to clear your quest backlog. Archon Quest Chapter 2 Act 4, In the Depths, An Unexpected Reunion, takes place in the underground mines of the Chasm. In the past, travelers had to complete the world quests, Chasm Spelunkers, and the Heavenly Stones Debris before being able to proceed to the Archon Quest. In this update, travelers no longer need to complete those two world quests. Mm. Instead, travelers can speak directly to the miner who issued the commission to unlock a teleport waypoint. Oh. It will take them to the corresponding area and automatically trigger the next steps of the Archon Quest. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> this will hopefully make it easier for travelers to quickly progress through Archon Quests. So cool. So that'll make it significantly easier for new or lapsed players to access the Archon Quest and claim those sweet, sweet intertwined fates as fast as possible. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. For sure. Also, one-click expeditions will be available starting in version 4.3. This will allow travelers to claim expedition rewards and repeat expeditions with a single click. Travelers will also be able to claim processed ingredients and forged items with a single click. Oh, sweet. That's going to make it easier to collect rewards from Catherine. Definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's also a ton of other quality of life improvements in this update. For example, optimizations have been made to enemy tracking with the Adventure Handbook and character selection logic during crafting and forging. In addition, when performing mystic offerings, travelers will now be able to add artifacts in batches. There's a lot to look forward to, so be sure to check future announcements for more information. Okay, moving on from optimizations, a new Fontaine-style realm layout will be added to the Serena Teapot. Simply purchase the corresponding items from Tubby to unlock it. 
Ah, oh, it looks like an aquarium. I know, right? <laughs> Travelers can use ocean currents to travel between the islands in this layout. Some islands even have ponds the travelers can use to keep fish. It oh. looks like a cool underwater kingdom. It's just so pretty. I yeah. know. And they'll be even prettier once travelers have the chance to make them their own. Mm. I'm so excited to see what everyone's going to come up with. Mm. Especially my friend's teapots. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you just want to copy their designs, don't you? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I knew it. I have another piece of super exciting news to share with everyone. Ooh. Okay, I know, right? The annual Genshin Impact online concert, Melodies of an Endless Journey, is coming soon! Yay! Yay! <laughs> I heard this year's concert is going to celebrate Genshin's classic melodies in an entirely new way. Let's take a sneak peek at some of the amazing moments that this concert has in store. The 2023 Genshin concert held in Shanghai last September will also be online soon, so stay tuned, travelers. <gasps> Whoa, so mm -hmm. we have two online concerts to look forward to? Yep. Further details will be announced across Genshin Impact's official social media accounts, so be on the lookout for more information. At the end of version 4.3, travelers can also look forward to the release of the fourth Genshin Impact character OST album, Stellar Moments Volume 4. The album will feature 26 character songs created by the Hoyo Mix team. Wait, we're finally getting I'll Hate Them and Wander's OSTs! Yep, <laughs> and Farina's song too! Her song All the World's a Stage has already been getting a ton of love. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, well, that's all the new information we have to share about the update. So, I guess that means it's time for the version 4.3 special program to come to a close. Aww. Aww. <laughs> but we haven't even come up with a plan for our Chiorio Boutique commercial. Actually, we've already finished shooting it. You're right. What? The special program was a pretty good commercial. I'm certainly not going to forget the name Chiorio Boutique after this. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Oh my gosh, we really did cover a lot of important information today. For sure. The most important part is our final word from our sponsor, Chioria Boutique. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Wow. <laughs> just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, I just wanted to let everyone know that I'm so excited to be a part of Genshin Impact, and I cannot wait for all of you to meet Shubras. Uh, totally. Mm -hmm, I feel mm -hmm. exactly the same. Can't wait to see more Navia in her fighting action. And <laughs> yeah. also, can't wait for little swimming sealies. Yes. They are so cute. So <laughs> oh my cute. Goodness. And I think the new mini games are really fun, especially the one where we get to make like a little mm -hmm. movie. Yes. <laughs> Well, I am just so glad that the three of us have been able to do this special program together. This has been so oh, much fun. Too. Really fun, And yeah. that's all we have for the version 4.3 special program. I hope that everyone's looking forward to experiencing all this exciting new content for themselves. Be sure to check it out when the update goes live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, bye. All right, bye. bye. <laughs> See you later. Bye. <laughs>